Hello YouTubers I am Professor Ajit Virkud from Mumbai India Today I am going to discuss adenomyosis which if I may say so is a somewhat neglected cousin of leiomyoma or fibroids Since this is a very long e lecture I have divided it into two parts This is the first part which mainly deals with the definition prevalence etiopathogenesis and pathology of adenomyosis In the second part I will discuss the diagnosis and treatment of adenomyosis so here goes In the past adenomyosis was considered only a pathological condition however in modern gynecology due to the availability of newer imaging techniques it is now considered as a clinical pathological condition where there is presence of heterotopic endometrium in the myometrium Rokitansky first described the existence of ectopic endometrium in the musculature of the uterine wall in 1860 under the name adenomyoma. It is also called endometriosis interna. When the extension is a circumscribed lesion, the nodule form is called as an adenomyoma and when the extension is diffuse invading the entire uterus, it is called adenomyosis. Bird has defined adenomyosis as the benign invasion of the endometrium into the myometrium producing a diffusely enlarged uterus which microscopically exhibits non-neoplastic endometrial glands and stroma surrounded by the hypertrophic and hyperplastic myometrium. The published prevalence of adenomyosis ranges from 5 to 8% to 40 to 70% of all uterine specimens it must be noted that this is the prevalence in pathological uterine specimen and not in the general female population the reasons for this wide range of prevalence are one the criteria for diagnosis vary two there are differences in the ages of subjects and three diagnosis is proportional to the number of cut sections taken the greater the number of sections taken the higher the prevalence since the exact etiology of adenomyosis is not known several different pathophysiological mechanisms have been suggested in 1895 von recklinghausen suggested that adenomyosis arises from wolffian relics that is it is of mullerian origin according to him In 1898 Ivanhoff was of the opinion that adenomyosis occurs due to penetration of the myometrium from serous coat after metaplasia. Hyperestrogenemia has also been proposed as the initiating factor for adenomyosis. However, the most accepted theory is that put forward by Cullen in 1896. He suggested that adenomyosis results from direct invasion or extension of basal endometrium into the myometrium. This occurs during a normal delivery. According to him, trauma of childbirth leads to breakdown of the normal endometrial border and subsequent reactive hyperplasia of the basalis endometrium leads to an invasion of the myometrium and subsequent adenomyosis. Today we know that the main initiating factor for adenomyosis is endometrial trauma that breaks the barrier between the endometrium and myometrium. This can occur during a normal delivery, cesarean delivery, medical termination of pregnancy and myomectomy. Trauma of childbirth leads to breakdown of the normal endometrial border. and subsequent reactive hyperplasia of the basalis endometrium leads to an invasion of the myometrium and subsequent adenomyosis childbirth may also promote invagination of the basal endometrium into the myometrium just after delivery when the full term uterus with its large surface area of the endometrium or decidua contracts to a cricket ball size uterus This causes the endometrial glands to get pinched off into the myometrium losing connection to the basal endometrium. Subsequent growth of these glands and stroma leads to the characteristic 
pathological features and symptoms of the disease. Iatrogenic adenomyosis following laparoscopic myomectomy when the myometrium was not sutured in layers has also been reported. The theory of breakdown of the endomyometrial border after trauma is supported by animal experiments. Recently, a new hypothesis that links both endometriosis and adenomyosis to the same predisposing factor has been proposed. An alteration of the spiral arteriole's angiogenesis has been put forward following the identification on MRI of myometrial junctional zone. The hypothesis postulates that ovulatory menstrual cycles during early reproductive life have an angiogenic priming effect that will permit successful deep penetration. It also under certain circumstances can lead to uterine disorders like adenomyosis. Further validation is required before this hypothesis is accepted. Association of adenomyosis with the following conditions suggests a common underlying disorder like hyperestrogenemia. It is known to be associated with leomyoma, endometriosis, endometrial hyperplasia, endometrial polyp, endometrial carcinoma, and salpingitis isthmica nodosa. In the next few slides, I will discuss the pathology of adenomyosis. On gross examination, the uterus is uniformly and sometimes asymmetrically enlarged globular but it rarely exceeds 12 weeks in size. It is heavy weighing on an average 125 grams. The external surface is smooth, regular and has a patchy pink color suggesting hyperemia or congestion. On cut section, myometrium shows diffuse hyperplasia. The posterior wall may be thicker than the anterior wall. It has a characteristic trabecular or granular appearance. Some cut sections may show small dark cystic spaces containing fluid or old blood giving it a characteristic burnt mastic appearance. This appearance is seen only if the section passes through the ectopic endometrial glands. As far as microscopic diagnosis is concerned, criteria for diagnosis vary. According to Novak and Woodruff, presence of heterotopic endometrium, at least one high power field below the basal endometrium should be considered adenomyosis. On the other hand, Benson and Sneeden have stricter criteria. Presence of ectopic endometrium, glands and stroma, at least two standard low power fields that is 4 to 5 mm beneath the endomyometrial junction and associated with adjacent myohyperplasia is called adenomyosis. None of these definitions have been accepted universally. The currently accepted criteria for diagnosis of adenomyosis is demonstration of endometrial glands or stroma within the myometrium, one half of a low power field which is equivalent to a depth of 2.5 mm or more. Some investigators prefer to define adenomyosis as the presence of endometrial glands and stroma to a depth of at least one third of the uterine wall thickness. This definition is specially useful in postmenopausal women with atrophic uterus. Some researchers like Molitor and Bird have attempted to grade adenomyosis. Molitor's grading is based on the depth of penetration. It is grade 1 when the depth of penetration is up to inner one third of the myometrium, grade 2 when the glands penetrate up to the middle one third of the myometrium, and grade 3 when the glands are seen in the outer one third of the myometrium. According to Bird et al., the number of ectopic glands per low power field defines the severity of the disease. It is considered mild when there are 1 to 3 glands per low power field. 
moderate when there are 4 to 9 glands of per low power field and severe when there are more than 9 glands of per low power field. Current accepted breeding is based on the depth of adenomatic foci within the myometrium, expressed as percentage of myometrial thickness. It is considered deep if glandular penetration exceeds 80%, intermediate if the depth of penetration is 40 to 80%, and superficial when the penetration is less than 40%. This concludes part 1 of my e lecture on adenomyosis. For further reading on this topic and other topics, refer to following textbooks written by me. Practical Obstetrics and Gynecology Modern Obstetrics Modern Gynecology Clinical Cases in Obstetrics Questions and Answers and Pelvic Reconstructive Surgery